Oh, Johnny, did you back the wrong horse? Will you hose him, please? Hose him. Hey, ghost heads. It's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. Making a new movie meant the Ghostbusters would be putting their packs back on. But it also meant introducing a new one. The Slime Blower. It's slime time. Like we mentioned in our Geigameter video, the August 5th, 1988 draft for Ghostbusters 2 doesn't mention slime blowers because there isn't any slime in the script. Instead, it has a psychomagnetic force which manifested as a plague of cockroaches. Egon thinks it might even be a tremendous breeding surge in the cockroach population. With rude New Yorkers as the cause, Peter goes on television and tells everyone to be nice to each other. What am I supposed to do? Go on television and tell 10 million people they have to be nice to each other? Being miserable and treating other people like dirt is every New Yorker's God-given right. Thankfully, this wasn't the final script. That was real stupid. The September 29th, 1988 draft had several familiar elements like the river of slime, yelling at petri dishes, and slime blowers, but they weren't named quite yet. The script simply states, each of them dons a makeshift back sack consisting of tanks, hoses, nozzles, and an abundance of gauges, valves, and regulators. It's actually Stance and Bankman who slime the Statue of Liberty, which emanates with a pinkish glow, and she is infused with positive magnetheric energy. So where did they get their name? In an unused scene, Ray says, It's your basic prototype, slime Azuka, GB900. The Ghostbusters 2 novelization by Ed Naha states, they strapped compression tanks to their backs and hooked up nozzles from their backpacks to the bazooka-like weapons Stance and Spangler had created. They adjusted the gauges, valves, and regulators on the prototypes of the latest ghostbusting weapons. Weapons that were untested. Weapons they had never used before. Slime blowers. And the final film also mentions them by name. Slime blower. But it was actually the November 27th, 1988 draft, which they first nicknamed it. Ray says, we have a prototype for a pressure forced, neutronically metered, fully portable delivery system. Basically, it's a slime blower. It's described as a bazooka like tube attached to a set of compressed air tanks. Vankman patronizingly says, See if you can keep it under 150 pounds. It was physically and emotionally painful. You forget how heavy it is to carry a small refrigerator on your back <laughs> for hours and hours a day. Boy, this equipment's heavy. In Cinefix Magazine number 40, Dan Aykroyd said, The slime blowers were three times as heavy and four times as bulky as the original packs. I think it took three to four guys to get us into them every time. These slime blowers are going to be every mother's nightmare if they go to the toy market. Believe me, they were built to spew slime all over the walls. Oh, baby! Oh, you're my number one Christmas boutique gift item! While they didn't release working toy slime blowers, Kenner did have the Ecto Charger Pack. This allowed kids to role play just like the Proton Pack released three years prior. Kenner also had the real Ghostbusters Slime Heroes action figures, but the slime blowers never appeared in the cartoon. However, they were in the Ghostbusters 2 adaptation by Now Comics. Dan Aykroyd went on to say, The only thing that worked on ours were the guns. The tanks were empty. The gun was actually a practical device with a spinner in it that sent the slime out and it was driven by a lot of compressed air. Off camera were the real tanks that fed our lines. The vats were five feet tall, and in some shots, you can see the hose feeding into the prop. Stephen Dane, designer of the most iconic Ghostbusters equipment said, 
One of my military magazines showed guys with big flamethrower backpacks, so I went with that idea. Like the proton pack, the slime blower was built onto an Alice frame. Most pieces were custom made, but some, like the Veriflex halogen headlights, were added to the prop. The Bud Industries project boxes had lights installed and Greeblies from the Tamaya 135th Kampfpanzer Leopard Medium Tank Kit. The same kit used to decorate the Ghostbusters 2 Ecto goggles. But how do they work? Why are my drippings with goo? As we mentioned in our video on the Geiger meter, negatively charged psychomagnetheric slime is largely basic with a high pH. In its raw form, black slime is actually caustic. Toxic to both body and soul, very dangerous. Egon and I haven't developed clothes and boots sufficient enough to insulate against the negative psychokinetic effects of this stuff yet, so be careful. Evo Shandor likely experimented to reduce its pH and created the more familiar pink slime. They are both composed of hydroxides. Since hydroxides are negative ions, they can strengthen an entity's existing negatively charged ions. This allows for a class four anchored possessor, like Vigo the Carpathian, to be elevated to a class seven transformed mortal remnant. To neutralize the slime effects, its pH must be lowered. Introducing hydrons will make it more acidic and eventually become positively charged. Uh-uh, this slime is positively charged. He'll wake up feeling like a million bucks. The positively charged hydrons can bond with the negatively charged ions, reducing the PKE bonds. This weakens any ectoplasmic entities utilizing psychomagnetheric slime. The slime blower has three tanks. The main one contains over 121.9 cubic feet of compressed oxygen with 2,216 PSI of pressure. Oof. The two secondary tanks contain approximately 581 liters of psychomagnetheric slime. The battery and regulator are housed at the bottom of the unit and can be monitored by the power meter. It supplies energy to the hydron pump and air dump valve slash muffler. The acidity level of the slime is observed by the pH flux monitor. If a shift is detected, the hydron supply provides a flow of deuterium gas through the hydron pump to the slime tanks to reduce its alkalinity. Oh, good slime, good slime. Winston, is our slime in a good mood tonight? The regulator directs the flow of oxygen from the main tank to the secondary ones. Three hoses connect to the discharge port. Two contain slime, one has pressurized air. The released valve allows air to travel to the spinneret and slime to go through the nozzle. Beautiful. But is it possible that yelling or complimenting a jar can change its appearance? Well. Dr. Mizuro Emoto conducted an experiment with three beakers of rice. For a month, he said, Thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After a month, the first beaker had fermented. The second blackened, while the third rotted. Do you think our moods can affect our environment? This is what you do with your spare time. If you like this video and think we deserve it, I love you guys. Please subscribe. Check out our official merchandise to get blueprints from the Ghostbusters equipment. Select Patreon tiers get five to 10% off. As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. And please go see Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm Heidi from Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. Don't put that in there.